Okay. Uh, I apparently misdialed the ticket office, but I'm serious. If you have tickets for tomorrow night's show, you better come early or no cigars. I'm awfully sorry about it. Once uh, uh, only. That's the only time we're going to do it. My first guest, actually my second or third guest tonight, depending on how you score the uh, first bit and then Buddy, um, is a very talented actor who starred in a TV series called Bosom Buddies and is currently starring in the runaway smash hit film of the decade, Splash. Please welcome Tom Hanks. <laughs> That's got to make you feel terrific. These folks are really... Uh... Buddy Hackett coming in like that? You bet. That was the <laughs> godfather of soul comes in, sits down. I thought, that's no. it, boy. It's a 90-minute special on you, Buddy. You thought you were not going to be on the show, huh? I, me and the nurses, we had a date. We were going down to Linda's for <laughs> some cheesecake. Yeah. That's an interesting sight, isn't it? Seeing about six or seven nurses clustered together there. It's like the St. Patrick's Day parade, you know? Hey, look! Oh, whoa! Hey! Roosevelt's, yeah! Hey, great! Oh, here comes Lennox Hills! Yeah, it's okay. This is, uh, this movie is really... <laughs> this movie is really big-time stuff, isn't it? Uh, as you check your business page, yeah, Wall Street Journal. But they're saying that it's, uh, it's saved Disney motion pictures? Well, is that the deal? No, it's saved. It's, it's, it's a bit, I think Pete's Dragon pretty much did that for him. It's, <laughs> it's, uh... <laughs> So this is to just say, gravy then, To huh? say that it saved Disney Studios, uh -huh. they're a very cash-rich organization anyway, yeah. you know. If, if one of their movies loses money, they just like take 10 minutes worth of revenues from their parks and say, ah, oh, we got it covered, don't yeah. worry about it. So, it's but good. it's... Uh, they made $82 million today, what's the big deal? But it uh, really pumped new life into it. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Well, it was, you know, it was very nice. They had a, a nice hands-off attitude towards us while we were making yeah. it. You know, we just kind of showed up and they gave us the money. Now, so. when you were doing this film, is this your first film? No. What this was your is, first film? My first film was originally titled The Uninvited. <laughs> when I started making it, it was called Blood Wedding. <laughs> After we made it, it was called Shriek. Uh-huh. And by the time it made the theaters, it was called He Knows You're Alone. And it's an epic motion picture. Uh, Orson Welles was involved for a few weeks. He dropped out. But, uh, was, was he involved I, in, a, in a directorial capacity? Or? He was a caterer. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, man's, the man's a legend. Now, the, the movie was actually released. It's called He Knows You're Alone. He Knows You're Alone. Yeah. And I, I played the know-it-all love interest who comes in and poo-poos the idea that this woman is actually being hounded by a killer. Yeah. Uh, I was, and I had three days on it. They said, Tom, thanks a lot. And about a month later... I'm walking just down 7th Avenue, and I bump into the producers of the film. It tells you something about the producers. They walk on 7th Avenue. <laughs> <clears throat> and they said, Tom, Tom, oh, geez, we're going to bring you back. We're going to have you killed. We ran out of money. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, Joe, for you, I would have come in and been, had my head severed or anything. It would have been a freebie, Joe. Yeah. You should have given me a call. Did the, happy to. Did the film do any business at all? It did business for about three days. They, they released it in every other theater in America. Uh -huh. Uh, hoping to get a big weekend out of it. They got a big Saturday, <laughs> and it was gone. I, I, saw it, you know, I saw it in Glendale, California, yeah. and swear to God, at the end of the uh, movie, the audience was yelling, get her, get her. Yeah, they so, don't. They don't uh, and Glendale, Glendale is not a tough town. No, That's it's not. It's a, a bunch of cream puffs yeah. down there, you know? Yeah. Used car salesmen and the like. Well, this is great. Now, the, the Bosom Buddies. Now, this, how long was the show on ABC? It was on two, two sagas, as we called it, yeah. uh, two seasons. Now, was that, uh, are, you, are you happy now that you don't have to mess around with putting on uh, women's clothing and well, taking hear, it off and putting it on? And... We, we were on, of course, long before Tootsie ever came around. That's right. We instigated the whole Tootsie groundswell yeah. that, that came about. <laughs> now, had we stayed on the air, of course, the, the gentleman at the ABC, uh, the American Broadcast, or Al's Broadcasting Company, most people don't realize. It's a guy, Al's a guy named Al owns the place. I didn't realize that. No. He drives up and says, this is my company. <laughs> Al's Broadcasting Company. <laughs> now, had they kept us on for just another half a season, of uh -huh. course, they could have cashed in on this whole thing. Oh, season. sure. And I know any minute now we're going to get the call from the executives. They're going to apologize. 
I said, Tom, I'm sorry. I don't know how it happened. It was a breakdown in communication, a scheduling problem. I'm sure that we'd love to have you back, and they'll offer us big bucks, and we'll say no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you. We, uh, we got to go away for station identification. We'll be back uh, more with Mr. Tom Hanks. Hi there. Uh, Tom Hanks is here. Now, tomorrow on this program, actress Stephanie Zimbalist. Do you know Stephanie Zimbalist? No, I do not. Lovely woman. She will be here. Also comedian Larry Miller and uh, Dr. Richard Brandt will I know be him. here. <laughs> uh, fun with Rockets with Dr. Brandt and viewer mail. Later in this half hour, Jersey Kosinski will be here. Gene Beckwith is here to blow those smoke bubbles. And uh, we have a, a nurse's uniform fashion show. It's a, uh, wow, what a show. Va, 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 boom. That's right. And also, tomorrow night, if you have tickets for the show, I know you don't believe me, but if you come here at the regular time, the place will be a ghost town. So try and get here a little early. Now, let's take a look at some of the film, oh, uh, no, Splash. No, I've seen it, and if we release one more clip, every scene from the movie will have been released to talk shows. So there can be, like, a pirate video made of the film, and Disney loses, like, millions of dollars in video cassette rentals, so let's not and just forget it. Pay so, so five bucks, okay? Let me, <laughs> no, let me, no. Let me get this right. You're worried that people <clears throat> via these shows will piece together all of the clips and have their own version of the movie at home. That's, that's right, Dave, yes. Okay. <laughs> Now, I know we have a clip, don't we? We have one here. Yes. Is it a good clip? Is it funny? Is it representational of this man's fine work? Yes. yes. All right. Now, do you want to see it or not? No, I don't. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen the movie. I've seen the clips eight million times. Merv beat you to the punch in the first place, so let's just forget about oh, it. Oh, he did, did he? <laughs> but did he have the woman blowing smoke bubbles? I don't think so. <laughs> now, Tom... You really don't want to see the clip? I do not want okay, to see Okay, then at least tell us what we would have seen in the clip. Oh, wacky stuff. There's this... <laughs> there's this we, the clip. It's in a car. <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me point out that this is a free country. If this man doesn't want to show the clip, he's certainly in no way obligated to show the clip. Now... Let's talk about the filming. Have of the I movie. just lost them for some reason? Oh no no no! No, no you're you're still beloved in there. <laughs> Tell me about the making of the movie, or do you not even want to talk? No, about I know the making of the movie is fine. A lot of it was done underwater, wasn't a it? A substantial amount of it was done underwater. <clears throat> what and kind I, of problem does that present for well, the actors? Well, uh, living like surviving is a problem for the yeah. actors. We had we had what we were, were called toe shots. Now, which consisted of a boat dragging me underwater <laughs> to make it seem as though we're jetting through effortlessly as we swim off to Nirvana. Now, <clears throat> originally, uh, about 82 of these shots were scheduled to be in the film. They uh -huh. ended up using one, but that didn't stop them from shooting the other 81 that were necessary. As long as they get the boat, As long as they get not? the one. Now, this consisted of uh, me putting on a body harness under my clothes. Yeah. They attached a monofilament line to me via the body harness, which ran through a pulley and then up to the surface, which was connected to a boat. Now, and then at, a, at 18 signals, boom, the boat would take off, I would be dragged under the water and would be, looks as though I'm flying, sure. not unlike uh, Superman. Uh, <laughs> now, we were doing this many times, and we finally headed down to clockwork, everybody was very safe. The last day of shooting, we moved to a different location and had Clarence, the new boat driver. <laughs> <laughs> Clarence was the kind of guy, when he came over to get his box lunch, he forgot to tie up his boat. Yeah. And we're eating our lunch with uh, Clarence, oh, my boat! Yeah. And he had to dive in and swim <laughs> after his boat, which was by then like 30 miles away, with a tiny boat and a speck on the horizon. Well, we have to hold our breaths, and you feel all sorts of tugs. You get the feeling, okay, I'm being pulled now, time to let go of the regulator, breathe. Good, now look like you're swimming, act, be wonderful, we're swimming to paradise as we zip over to our safety divers who pop it into our mouths and we can breathe again under these this two atmospheres. It's a very big thing. Yeah. Well, when Clarence, Dangerous. the first time Clarence did it, we got the signal, I feel myself slowly being pulled, out comes the regulator, and I'm getting ready to pick up speed, and we don't, and we're just, by then, the 
I'm out of range. I realize I have about three and a half miles to go to the other air tank, and it's not going to happen. Now, this was the signal for I'm out of air to the other safety divers that were down there. The next day in dailies, we saw a shot of a rock underwater that was there for like three and a half minutes till finally my head comes around going... <laughs> I, the bruises are still healing from my chest. I broke three ribs. It was okay. I'm all right, and there will be no lawsuits. So well, good. The good. movie's making some bucks. I think, so I think you have a nice attitude about all of this. Well, I, I want to work, and I want to continue, and uh, anything, anything beats going back to the post. Office. Well, it's uh, congratulations uh, on this terrific success. This Thank is you. great Thank for you. Thank you very You're much. You're very funny and gentleman. Nice to meet you, Nice Tom. to meet you. Tom Hanks. Well, we'll be back with Gene Beckwith. is a two-time Academy Award winner and one of the biggest movie stars on the planet. Please welcome the extremely talented, the always entertaining, America's sweetheart, Tom Hanks. Tom, come on. of two-time Oscar winners outside this theater for the last month and a half. Yeah, we've been Hoping that there'll be room on these two. Very, very lucky. And thank you because you. Uh, I know you're uh, busy right now working on a film uh, yes. on another I continent. I flew in from a time zone so far away, Dave, it has a money that I can't pronounce. Yes. Wow, that is, that's, now, it's, how? It's, yeah, that's I happen far. to know that you're working with uh, uh, your good friend, uh, Ron Howard. Ron Howard. We're, and yes. you're, you're, uh, he's a pivotal part as the director in giving stage instructions yes, as indeed. you do the film. This is my because a lot of it will be... Uh, uh, CGI and, and editing. Computer generated. Ron, I, this is the fifth time I've worked with Ron. It's right. another Robert Langdon uh, in Da Vinci Code mm -hmm. thriller called Inferno. All right, give us a taste. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm not... But I'm not... I'm not... I, I'm not plugging my future films, no. Dave. <laughs> we'll leave that to those other lesser shows oh, in the future. No. You can do anything right. you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Anything you like. All right. No, I'm not ragging on anybody. But Ron... The, uh, Ron, this is the third one, and Ron is a genius. I love working with this guy. He's, I'm, I'm inspired by him. He's also a peer. He was Opie. He was Richie. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, he's, he told the world to eat my dust in, in a movie a long time ago. And uh, we, we had a very, very comp It's myself and Felicity Jones, who is a wonderful actress. And we had a very, I call them hairy scenes, scenes that have a lot going on right before we shoot them in the story and a lot going on afterwards. And for about five hours, you have to be very focused, very intense, and very on every moment of these scenes. Lasts about, uh, lasts about two minutes. The dialogue is important, the story is important. More important, the emotionality of it is very yes. important. And it's not easy to sustain, but luckily, with Ron Howard, he, he, he keeps us going, he right. keeps us going. And it's got to be there on the screen. If it's not, you've wasted everybody's right. time. And, which you might know a couple of things about. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. <laughs> You just couldn't help I'm yourself. I'm just piling you, on. You Jeez, couldn't help cares? yourself, could you? So, so we, had, we have a, a, a first AD, um, Bill Connor, who I call Bull, based on a historical guy. Uh, but, uh, and Bill Connor was calling out the important cues, because we are chased by malevolent, 
helicopter drones oh, in God. this in this yeah. bit of the movie. And they have to fly around and they threaten us and they, they go and they come back and they hover and then they go away and then they come back. We always have to know when that was going because we, we had to look. Yeah. And Bill, who announces everything with the same exact cadence. All right, we're ready to go. Thank you, please. First team, thank you. All right, let's do that again, everybody. First team again, thank you. It doesn't matter what's going on. He speaks uh -huh. in the same kind of monotonous uh, airport sure. voice, you know, kind right. of thing. So I said, Bill, Bill, look, I love you, but... Ron, could, could you give us a little juice on this? Because the helicopter had to hover and go away and then come back and threaten us. And you're reacting and, to something that's not and really there. Felicia and I need some, yeah. we, we need yeah. some, we need some JoJo there, you know? So, so Ron got, okay, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So, we say, ready, rolling, in action, and we run in and we start doing our dialogue, and it's very intense. And then, uh, from off camera, you hear, drone! <laughs> hovering! Hovering! <laughs> Ho and he's looking at the monitor right there, so we're right there, and so, hovering! Drone! <laughs> it came back! It's gone! <laughs> now it's back! It's back! <laughs> Hovering! And we did this. We did this. We were, we were shooting in... We were shooting in Florence, which, according to my talking points that have been provided to me by the marketing departments, Florence, Italy, is the birthplace of the Renaissance. So we were shooting there. Um, they give us these. We, we were shooting at a very famous place, the, the, the Palazzo Vecchio, which uh, the Medici's lived in. And, so, and they're still open to the tourists, so tourists from all over the world are hearing this echo throughout <laughs> this ancient palace. Hovering! <laughs> Drugs! You, you see them? They're gone! <laughs> now they're back! <laughs> so we did this for like... We did it for like oh, five God. hours, God. and we were spent. But now this will be really something exciting. Uh, oh, and see, this is what I'm, I'm, such a, I'm such a jerk, Dave, because this will be a great moment in the movie. Yes. Provided no one has seen this bit on your show, <laughs> it'll, it'll be great. it'll be even better. Because I'm thing. actually, according to the talking points that the marketing department gave me, <laughs> rule number one is do not ridicule the movie you are in. <laughs> so, and I, here I, I, I so blown it already. So thanks, yeah, yeah, right, right, they're, they're back. They're back. They're back. Oh my God. Hovering. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, with Tom we'll be Hanks, right back. everybody. Let it go. Yeah, we go, you know. 84 is Dave, right. you and I, you and I got to know each other about the seventh time I did your show because mm -hmm. we bumped into each other mm -hmm. in the makeup room. Um, so he actually said something to me that wasn't on a blue card, which I really appreciated <laughs> back then. <clears throat> but we can go back a long way. There's a great story, and I don't know if I've heard it from you before, but I, but I know that this story. Your, uh, your nascent part of your career, you're in Los Angeles like so many others. Yes. You're working, but yet you don't have money I, because you've just started working. I, I, we had, I left New York City in my apartment, and we were... Staying at the, I had made the pilot for Bosom Buddies. Mm -hmm. We were staying in the fabulous, if you know LA, thank you. Oh, please, please. Um, <clears throat> we were living in the Oakwood Garden Apartments on Bar and Boulevard. Right, building, exactly building where those W. Are. Um, North, North but Hollywood. Uh, the, uh, the actors went on strike in the summer of 1980, so I'd made the pilot and I had this job, but we, we were not working. Uh, the, it, the town was, was shut down, and, and it hadn't been for Peter Scolari, God bless him, left me with his car, because mm -hmm. he'd gone back to New York. So I had his car. I had paid up uh, my furnished apartment for a while. My son Colin was about three, but eventually we got down to like our last 180 bucks, mm -hmm. and there's still no end to the strike in, uh, in sight. And uh, one day, just for the sake of getting out of the friggin' house, we went to the carousel in uh, Griffith Park, which happened to be boarded up because it was out of season. Mm. So 
fate is conspiring against yeah. me. You know, I got a kid. We don't have any money. The carousel is boarded up. So for fun, we rolled down the grass hill. Fine. Just fine for a kid. Yeah, it's all right. And, I, you know, two or three times, a little nausea. We're pretty much done. There's not much else to do. So we start heading back to the car. And a guy had gone into a public restroom and changed out of his work clothes and was in his running outfit. And he had his clothes on a hanger, mm -hmm. his pants and a jacket. And we're, I'm following the path back to the parking lot. I see that unmistakable wad of green. You know the green I'm talking about. Money. You see that little bit. It's a, a green not found anywhere in nature right. except by the U.S. Treasury. Yeah. So I scoop up what is a wad of bills, and I have no idea. It was 60 bucks. It was t three $20 bills. And I said to the guy, excuse me, but I think you dropped something from your pants. And he looked at me and said, uh, I didn't drop nothing from my pants. And I said, no, 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 no. I just found something, and I'm pretty sure it fell out of your pants, or they're on that hanger right now. Wow. And he said, uh, no, I don't think anything fell out of my pants. And I finally said, well, look, guy, these, this is 60 bucks, and it came, obviously, out of your pants, because you just changed. Now, he looked, at, he looked at us, and we had been rolling down a hill of grass. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing more or less the same clothes I bought when I went to junior college. <laughs> And we look like we live in the park, not that we're just staying there. Yeah. And so he said to me, oh, man, I couldn't sleep tonight if I took that money. <laughs> so, wow. So, so um, but wow. another thing. So we took the $60. This was, in, uh, this was in September. We had about another four weeks of the strike left. Uh, it was in September. And I took that $60. We went to Ralph's, bought about a week's worth of groceries and two copies of the TV guide that had my picture in it, along with Peter Scolari <laughs> wow. as the stars of the new hit ABC sitcom. That's delightful. Bosom Buddies. Absolutely so delightful. Was, uh, but you remember those days? Yes. Scrounging for jokes? Yes. I remember that was when you were, you had just been fired from the morning show. Uh, that was not That's too a, long right after yeah, that. Yeah, in the, in the, like, 80 Except, or yeah, something, right, 79, yeah. 80, yeah. But yours, yours was the only 90 minutes or an hour that we had during those bleak, bleak days. <laughs> and you must have known from watching that it was going to be short-lived, that it was going to be a short run. Well, I just, I just didn't see the housewives digging you <laughs> at 9 a.m. <laughs> I just, I just didn't see that acerbic Frank. Yeah. You know, if you had, if you would, if you would ever know what it did, it just held up a box of Calgon bath oil beads <laughs> and said, be, uh, that's very funny. Thank you so much, Cher. You know, Mom, <laughs> when you've had a tough day, <laughs> you know, Mom. what breaks the tension more than a nice hot bath with Calgon bath oil beads? We'll be yeah. right back yeah, after. Then you might have, you could have, you could have stayed I, on I'd TV. I'd still be on now, for you God's could, sake. You could, and then you could have moved right from that into hosting concentration. <laughs> Uh, now, you know, uh, 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 I heard this, and then I heard it wasn't true, and now it apparently is true, that the landmark, iconic uh, toy store in Manhattan, uh, FAO Schwartz, What a week this is, Is, is going to, is gone. Is it gone? They, this is my understanding. FAO Schwartz at, on Fifth Avenue mm -hmm. is, 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 is now the rent is too expensive, and so they're moving. This is where we shot the piano yes. dance in Big. Yeah. Uh, I got to tell you, how they're... This is a, I'm just, I'm just rattling off all my credits you're, you're tonight, fine. ain't me? Uh, you're just like they are. I don't know what other. But these are these. This is the stuff of our lives. We spend a whole day in there, and I, I, how can how is that place going out of business? I have not walked into an FAO Schwartz in my life and not walked out with 280 bucks worth of merchandise. That's right. So you just it's, you just keep buying exactly. stuff. I remember buying Jar Jar Binks merchandise in there for my kids. <laughs> I mean that that's what a sucker you are sometimes <laughs> when you walk in there. But now it's it's closing up, and I just pray pray that the new tenant is an old navy. Don't you? <laughs> um, I will. Uh, it's fashionable, yeah. fashion, affordable fashion that lasts and lasts. Yeah. Either that or, uh, just by the floor space alone, Manhattan's largest Chipotle. <laughs> this would be... <laughs> This would be about, <laughs> I kinda about like that. as great. Because look, I'm going to tell you right now, I've been down to the village with my wife, mm -hmm. Granite's Village. They have all the great stores down there that they don't need Midtown. They've got the Pottery Barn in yeah. the village. Mm -hmm. They've got Whole Foods. You know, we were just down there. We went to this really great jazz coffee house with a nautical theme, my wife and I. They had some hippie beatnik coffee. It was called Starbucks. It was just, <laughs> it was just so fraught with New York atmosphere. <laughs> and I just, I just hope, 
Huh? Hippie it was Hippie Club? Jazz Club. <laughs> you know, you're having Bob Dylan on tomorrow, right? Uh -huh. And I bet you anything. This is, the jet, this is the Starbucks <laughs> coffee house where Bob Dylan sang that amazing song. Fois a ten amount of hoot to poi. Into a ten amount of very tie. Gonna go to sin with a mega tie. You know, I saw, my wife and I saw Bob Dylan at the El Rey in L.A. a long time ago, and it was fabulous. We had no idea what he sang. We had to, re <laughs> we had to read the set list the next morning in the paper. <laughs> we had no idea. I said, really? That was all along the Watchtower? <laughs> Who a, knew? That's a show. I did not know. And you mentioned, you mentioned your wife. I know she's here. Do you mind if we just say hi to your oh, wife? Oh, no, my lovely Ladies wife is Ladies and gentlemen, backstage. the lovely Rita Wilson. There she is. There she hey! is. Hey, baby. On Broadway. Well, we miss you. Oh, look at that. Look at that. She's hard. Oh, God bless you. We'll be right back. Right oh, thanks, everybody. Now, now, Dave, much like. Much like your audience, much like your audience, at, on Thursday, I'm pulling the plug. Uh -huh. I'm, go, I'm cutting the cord. No TV. I'm going off the grid. There's oh. no reason for that idiot box in the seven rooms of my house any longer. <laughs> I, I, I can get any seven-minute bit on the, on the YouTube. I could get that on my it's phone. The, it's the end of TV, I really. I look, so the, the NFL is filled with a bunch of cheaters anyway, so I'm not going <laughs> to watch that. I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even going to buy, I'm not even You know what i what I'm taking away from your visit here is the image Th of... That of, I'm, uh, that I become cranky? No, no. <laughs> the, uh, the image of Ron Howard at his home, <laughs> and he believes there are uh, flying saucers. <laughs> they're back! They're back! Now, okay, they're gone! Now, it, not, they're back! <laughs> he, uh, he staged this one great stunt. Can I, can I, okay, yeah. first of all, let me tell you right now. Um, uh, I do my own stunts. No, you don't. Uh, no, I do. No, Dave. you don't. Oh, come on, it's you're, common. You're a billion-dollar guy. I'm gonna if tell you, you get something. hurt, everybody I'm going to tell you home. something right now. If you, if you find a stunt man that says, I do Tom Hanks' stunt, mm -hmm. two things. Number one, he's a liar. Mm -hmm. And number two, he's fired. <laughs> because because <laughs> if, okay. If you don't think I actually do this, I do, run, I do my own running and I do some of my own driving. But uh, some of your own driving. You know, it's a dangerous enterprise well, yeah, sometimes because they hook you up to other things. You don't but, know. Uh, we, can we show the clip of this? My exciting, you have a clip of the new movie. Uh, I, it, I, I'm, let me see how I'm supposed to introduce this. Um, it's darn nice of you to do. On the back streets of Florence, Italy, the birthplace of the Renaissance. <laughs> Our second and first units blocked off traffic in order to get precious, valuable production sequences in an action thrill stunt show like atmosphere. Yeah. So if we could if we could just show that. <laughs> yeah. I love by the way, I love the interns that type these talking yeah. points up yeah, for you us. See, you sound like great Forrest job. Gump reading that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How let's just let's just the Forrest Gump reference came <laughs> when exactly? That's a little late. Way in. Now it. look, okay, this this is actually our stunt doubles. This is the stunt double. Button. Okay, all right. So what? now what we have here is something you don't see. No. This is this Behind is the scenes. not done. This is a movie that will be released when in the spring, maybe. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Look, look. You want to look at your sheet? Uh, let me find out when the release date's <laughs> Um, hold on, I got it. I got it. Look for it. Oh, look for it sometime in the third quarter of 2016. There you go. So here, it's a little taste. Check out this. Whet your appetite. That's right. Yeah. Tom Hanks, Inferno. About that, Dave. Is that, is that not? Wait a minute. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. When... When, when, you're, when you're standing, when you're standing close enough to see what the doubles are doing, uh -huh. which is about 120 feet, yeah. those carabinieri's roar by on yeah. those motorcycles. Well, let me tell you something. I saw no drones. Oh, that, that wasn't the drone sequence. Let me see that again. You want to see it I again? See, oh, here, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, let me add some Ron Howard to it. Okay. Ready? Okay, here you go. 
And okay, okay. Cue the motorcycle. Motorcycle number two. <laughs> All right, good. That's that's the way Ron. <laughs> All right, good. That's it. Let's go back to number one. Wow, that's fantastic. Oh, hey, can I get a selfie? Yeah, no. <laughs> You know, what, Rita, wait a minute. Rita, what is this? Rita said, Rita announced when they first came out that we will never, ever get a, have a selfie like stick in the house. But you know where they sell them, Dave? Golf course. They, they sell these selfies all over Florence, which was the birthplace of the Renaissance. <laughs> and look, I realize that a huge amount of, uh, of uh, computer space is taken up with such things, selfies of ourselves, and I think by and large they can be pretty goofy. But you got it. Oh shoot! Hold on. Stop tape. Stop tape. Stop tape. They're back. Stop back. <laughs> All right, I got it. But look, Dave. Just I'm going to say you can't see it, you in the audience. But look at the throw on this baby. Come on, look at that. And look, I'm going to press this button. There we are, Dave. Now can I give you? We get it up above the chin, above the chin. There we go. Well, how did you take it right there? Yeah, you press a you press a button, and out it comes. Oh, oh wait a minute. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, there, there it is. There it oh, is. That's fantastic. Look at that throw on that baby. That's Dave. a beauty. That's a beauty. So, when you uh, in a couple of weeks, when you head down to, I'm just going to guess what you're going to be up to. Two words: space camp. Um, <laughs> take one of these take bad of those, boys with yeah. you. You know what that is, Tom? It gives the impression it's almost like someone else has just taken the picture for you. Be, which will work for you, Dave, because it will mean you've been on vacation with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just. It doesn't need to be I, that I, insulting. I'm just, I'm just going with the screen persona. <laughs> you've established. Oh, I see. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, oh, I, I will never be able to repay this man's kindness, his generosity, and his talent for the world. It's our friend, Tom Hanks. Tom? That's great. All right. We'll be back with Eddie Vedder.